What's up guys? Welcome back to the show called Joey Answers Your Questions, the show. So most of the comments from last video uh, were you guys being completely blown away at the fact that I'm 23 years old. I should have saw that coming. I look older than I am, which usually isn't a good thing. So the first question comes from Basti Arismendi, who says, what do you think about people saying the self-improvement world is like dark and toxic because in order to be profitable, you have to be unsatisfied with yourself. Greetings from Chile. I kind of see where you're coming from, I think. When your goal in self-improvement is to improve yourself, you're by nature kind of saying that what wherever you are now isn't quite good enough or it's not quite satisfactory. So you need to improve in order to get better or in order to be satisfied with your life. But the problem with that is that it's paradoxical in nature because if your goal is improvement, you don't actually have a finite goal because no matter what you achieve, it's just not gonna be good enough. That's the paradox of self-improvement. And if you treat it this way, it can be kind of toxic. If you don't set legitimate goals and finite things to achieve, then you're constantly going to be dissatisfied with your life because your goal is to make it better. No matter how good you are, get better. But at the same time though, it's sort of impossible to be like, okay, I reached 185 pounds at the gym and I have 11% body fat. I should just be satisfied with this, never work out again and because I achieved it. But that's problematic because if you don't do anything in life, naturally things start to fall apart. I mentioned this in a previous video on this channel, but you almost have to keep moving. So you almost need to adopt a different mindset. And that's where learning to love the activities for themselves, for their own sake, is so important. That's why you have to love going to the gym for the sake of going to the gym. You have to fall in love with how going to the gym makes you feel. You have to fall in love with how eating well makes you feel. You have to really learn to enjoy reading. You need to find ways to really enjoy the things that you do day to day. Otherwise, if you're thinking about the goal all the time, you're never gonna get there. And if you think about improving all the time, improvement is never gonna be enough because you can always get better. That's why it's so important to find out what things are good for you and you enjoy doing in life and make sure you do these things every day and find fulfillment in these things for their own sake. Branson Limo says, hey Joey, if you're comfortable doing it, could you make a video on your journey of going bald? I'm 18 turning 19 and I'm basically going bald, shaved earlier this year. Sometimes I have this deep fear. I don't know how to describe it, but it turns into an insecurity of some sort. And you know, you own the look beautifully, thank you. And all in all, just portray confidence, thank you. So like maybe some tips here and there would be appreciated and yeah, what you felt at the time pretty much. I'll probably make a whole video on this on the main channel as I've received many requests to talk about you know, my journey going bald, what age I went bald. I'll touch on some of those things briefly and give you some tips and tricks as to how I deal with it. Although I don't know if I really actively think about tips and tricks anymore because it's so normal to me now. I think it's been two, three years since I shaved my head, probably not that long, but it's really something I, I don't think about when I go out into public. It's just, it's just who I am. It wasn't a shock to me because two of my older brothers shaved their heads in university because they were also losing their hair. So I knew it was in the cards for me and it was just a matter of time. It's like, I know it's not a matter of if, it was when. I noticed my hair was thinning at 17. I asked my parents if I could go on Rogaine a little bit. So I tried that, but I was inconsistent. Um, I still had a decent amount of hair at 18 in my first year of university. Um, but I noticed it was thinning and I was pretty insecure about it. I wouldn't say I was unconfident because of my thinning hair, but it was definitely something that, it might've been a subconscious thing because I was always trying to shape it in a way that made it look like I had more hair and it took extra time going out the door and ultimately it didn't even look very good. You know, if you have thinning hair and a receding hairline, it's never gonna look as good as someone who has a full, thick, healthy head of hair. And that's just something that you have to accept. And the best way to accept it, in my opinion, is to shape it off. Just eliminate that variable. <laughs> That's the route that I took and I still have like a little bit of 
coverage on the top of my hair, um, on the top of my head. Yeah, I just, I ultimately think that eliminating the variable, AKA getting rid of the hair, made me not think about it anymore. And therefore I could just, you know, it took some getting used to. People who I knew really well could be like, oh, you shaved your head, looks good. And that's it. That's basically the entire reception that you get for shaving your head. You're not gonna get an award or anything. No one's gonna give you a pat on the back, but it's more for your own sense of security. If you eliminate the thing that's making you insecure, then you'll cease to be insecure about that thing. You probably find another way to be insecure, but yeah, it really helps. If I was to give any advice, if your hair is receding and you can't seem to stop it, I would say just have courage, shave it off. In my opinion, it looks a lot better and it eliminates your insecurity, especially once you shave it off, if you go out in public as much as possible without wearing a hat, you just rock the shaved head look. You'd be shocked as to how quickly you get used to it and you might come to actually like it. You get a bunch of superpowers when you shave your head too. The first one being that you're a little bit more intimidating and this only works if you develop some muscle mass otherwise you'll look like a sick, a sick sick, I don't know, someone who's sick. So if you shave your head put on some muscle and you know, get a little bit of stubble or something like that and you'll look a lot better. The second superpower is that you can tell when it's raining way before anyone else. Next question comes from Katib Ahmed. Have you read the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Any thoughts? Bro, I'm so sorry to say this, but I've not read the books. I've only watched the movies. I'm in love with the movies. It's the best trilogy of all time, hands down, no question, but I haven't read the books. And I know it's only a matter of time before I read the books, um, getting a little bit more into fiction these days, but yeah, it's something I still have to do. Sorry about that. Potter Tardis says, how does it feel to be an inspiration for so many people? Feels good. And I say that as humbly as I'm capable of doing, which as soon as I say I'm humble, I'm not humble anymore, but it does feel really good that people get a lot out of my videos. It makes the videos worth it to me. It makes making the videos worth it to me. I just hope that I don't lead people astray with some of the things I said. And I think it's really important that people realize that no matter who's making the videos and no matter how good the advice is, you kind of have to bullshit test it a little bit. Take it with a grain of salt. Try it in your life. If it doesn't work, drop it. You know, what I say is not gospel. What I say is just things that work for me and I'm inviting you to try it out in your own life. And if it doesn't work, don't do it. And I'm actually super curious to hear what stuff that I've recommended doesn't work in your life because that shows me that I can put out videos and people can wrestle with the concept and take little pieces from it if they want, leave what's useless behind. Um, and it makes me feel like I have a very mature audience, which I really like. So it feels really good to be an inspiration for a lot of people, um, but I just really hope that people don't follow me in a cult-like manner uh, because I will ask you to drink the Kool-Aid at some point. Captain Sinbad says, my question is, ha 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 ha. Ask a better question, dude. Jos Ruiz says, I love the energy in cabron. It means dumbass. <laughs> I had no idea. Cabron, cabron. Nico Klaus the third says, I'm 25 and studying ecology as my master. Over the past month, my interest in the subject and for future jobs in this niche or niche has almost completely vanished and I feel like I'm an expert in nothing. I know that I love stories, films, and good edits, especially in the form of high quality YouTube videos, but I don't know what to make of it and I have no skill in editing yet. Do you think there's still time for me to learn a whole new thing and make it my job or am I too late and I should just make it a hobby while staying on the path I've been on for years? It looks like Mind Now gave a pretty detailed response, so I'm gonna go over this and see if I agree or disagree with his response. He says, okay, I'm probably not an expert in this, but it's nice to see that there are people out there who are in a similar position. I say it's never too late because, hey, you live only once, so why not do what makes you happy? Stop comparing and go your unique path. Taking responsibility for everything and all is good. If you want to start editing, then just start. That's it. We are in this together. I believe in you and you should believe in yourself as well. I'm just here to say that you are not alone. Nothing is ever a waste of time. Change that attitude and perspective. Everything is a learning experience. I actually think that is wonderfully put. Thank you for that comment, mine now. As for my own take on this situation, 
I feel like a lot of the time when you're treading the same path, it can get really boring. Um, and if you're so close, honestly, you might as well finish it. It doesn't mean like nothing is stopping you from picking up filmmaking as a hobby. I know so many people who think they want to go into filmmaking because they watch a lot of videos and they like the aspect of it or they, they like film or something like that. And they start working in it and they actually hate it. It was nothing like they thought it would be. I just wanna give you a little bit of cautionary advice um, saying that I, I wouldn't necessarily drop everything and abandon the path that you've been on. Um, just to just because you think you might like filmmaking the best way to Test whether that is actually a good path for you to go on is to start right now Just like my now is saying nothing is stopping you from taking a little video with your phone and editing it and trying to make it funny um, Or make it educational or something you can start filmmaking with the tools that you have right now and you can start to realize whether it's something that you really like uh, something that you really like doing and something that you can do for the rest of your life or if it's something that you know was a little bit of a pipe dream and you don't actually enjoy it you just enjoyed the thought of doing something more interesting and more glamorous than what you're doing right now stay calm don't get super emotional about this whole situation that you're in start filmmaking right now see if you like it and then come back to this decision and see if you can confidently make a decision. Always remember this idea of the sunk cost fallacy, and that is the fallacy that the more resources and time you put into a certain thing, even if it's a bad idea, you should stick with it because you've invested so much already. That's a total logical fallacy. The right path might be something completely different that you've put no effort into already. Um, and if that's the right thing to do, then you should drop the thing that you put so much time and investment into if it's not the right call, because what's the point? It's the same reason why people spend so much time in abusive relationships. It's because, you know, if they were able to work out, you know, the 300th fight and the 301st fight and the 302nd fight, they might as well try to stay in the relationship after the 304th and the 305th and, you know, until the end of their life not realizing that they could just leave the relationship and get into a relationship where there's not nearly as much tension or manipulation or anything. So just remember the sunk cost fallacy, try to make the rational right call. And part of that is exploring your options, starting filmmaking right now, see if you like it, and then come back to that decision. Mayank says, hey Joey, I was interested in knowing, number one, what are the sources you draw inspiration from for the videos you make? And number two, what sources would you recommend from where we can learn about such stuff, like a comprehensive list. For my older videos, I used to draw inspiration from a lot of self-improvement books or articles and stuff like that. But recently I've been trying to read kind of deeper things. I'm reading a lot of the Stoic authors like Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus and stuff like that. And when I read these things, I'm always sort of reflecting on my own life as I read. And anytime I come up with a good idea in the shower or while I'm reading or working out, I always pull out the notes app on my phone and start jotting down some of the thoughts that I'm having. And more often than not, those thoughts become full-fledged videos as I start thinking about them and you know, spend days or weeks or even months just trying to make sense of it, bullshit testing them, seeing if it's actually true or not, eventually sitting down and trying to flush it out in a organized manner uh, into a, a video script. As for a comprehensive list, I'm currently working on a website right now. It's almost done and I'm gonna have my favorite books and stuff like that on the website. So I'm really looking forward to that, so stay tuned. Comfort. Ahibola says, the sound quality is always so good. I'm looking for the mic. Thank you. Um, this mic is a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, and it's the key to good sound quality that people, or the most underrated key to good sound quality is to just have the mic really freaking close to your face. It makes a world of difference. This is like, I always do the finger test in the monitor because the black end of the mic is kind of hard to see, but my finger is easy to see in the monitor. I dip my finger down and I try to get the mic as close to this finger as possible. So even right now it can come down just a bit, Not too much. And I, and I try to point it like right at my neck area because I find that with my, my voice, 
it resonates best in this part. Um, and if I move back a little bit, there's still some leeway. Um, some people say the chest, some people say the mouth. I like to strike a balance point right at the neck. And it sounds pretty good. <laughs> Alondra, <laughs> 18 minute video and all I got out of it is that you're single. You should listen. Listen to the rest of what I'm saying. What's, what is this? Oh yeah, guys, so let me know. Should we start a subreddit? Because I'm a big fan of memes, and I think if we make some self-improvement memes and stuff, I could look at it and uh, go over it on this second channel here. And uh, it could be a lot of fun. And we could have like the memes pop up and my reaction to it. I think it would be cool. Uh, so let me know. Mikhail Stefanov says, where did you get your pale yellow cup from? It's, um, I don't know. I think my mom got this for me. It says, Woodland Collection. So it's, uh, it's probably my favorite mug, to be honest. If I'm being honest, which I'm usually not. I always find that a kind of a brutal phrase. I don't really like that. To be honest, if I'm being honest, it implies that you're not usually honest. But this time, if I'm being honest, what are some other brutal phrases I hate? Work hard, play hard. I hate that one. Sorry, not sorry. I freaking hate that. Comment below, which saying is worse? Work hard, play hard, or sorry, not sorry? Both of them are just, they annoy me, they just grind my gears. Let's just say that. Potter Tardis says, what was your favorite movie when you were a child? My favorite movie when I was a child was Gladiator for the longest time until I saw District 9, and then that was my favorite movie, and then I saw Inception, and then that was my favorite movie. And now I don't have a favorite movie. I just, I like so many different movies for different reasons. Bina5 says, hey Joey, have you done any personality tests? Big Five, Enneagram, MBTI? Care to share what category you fall in for those? Love from the UK. Yeah, I've done a couple of them. I haven't done Big Five. Oh, MBTI is probably Myers-Briggs, right? Enneagram, I'm pretty sure I'm an eight wing seven. Back when I did Myers-Briggs, I think I was a, ENTJ, but I don't necessarily know, I don't have a deep understanding of any of those. I just think that's what I scored as. For those of you who know the Enneagram well, what Enneagram would you think I come across in my videos? And would you be surprised if I told you I'm an Enneagram 8 wing 7? Johan Delau says, great video. Also, how tall are you? I am 5'10". Not, I mean, on a good day. If I'm standing up straight, I'm 5'10". If I'm slouching, I'm 5'9". I'm right on the cusp. So I'm not like a abysmally short guy, but I'm definitely not tall. All right, guys, that is it. If you want to answer, if you want me to answer more questions, comment on this video below. I'll answer them in the next video. Let me know what you think of that subreddit idea. But for now, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video or on the main channel because there's a new video coming out really soon. See you next time.